Hi everybody, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today I thought I'd show you what I've been up to with my dahlias and what I'm doing and everything that's taking up so much of my time at the moment. So I thought I'd show you everything that I'm doing and I've got a couple of stages that I go through and I'm going to show you all those stages. So I'm going to show you um, how we store them and how I take them out of storage, how I decide whether or not I want to divide them and how I divide them. And I do have other videos about that which I'll put in the description below I'll put a link to those um, because I've got some very detailed instructions on how to divide dahlias um, and then I'm going to show you how I pot them up and what I do with them before I plant them in the garden and I always pot my dahlias up before I put them in the garden I never put mine straight in the garden and there are two reasons firstly I want to start them early um, so I start them before my last frost date it's actually freezing cold at the moment I'm triple layered out here I'm really bitterly cold um, so it's not time to plant our dahlias out because they can get damaged by the cold but also I find that by putting them up and growing them on until they're quite strong plants it's a really good way to avoid slug and snail damage because we have pests and even though I treat the garden with nematodes for the slugs that doesn't get rid of the snails so I like to protect my dahlias when they're young by keeping them in pots in a protected spot and that way um, when they're ready to go out in the garden they're nice strong plants and they really do withstand any pest attacks so much better that way. So this is how we store our dahlias um, in crates and in wood shavings so this is just like you know pet bedding um, and all our dahlias are in here And I store them upside down and I tag them. So this one is Linda's baby. So then they come out of storage looking a bit like this. This one has already got some shoots here. So it's waking up and that is because um, I brought them in, uh, oh, how long ago? I'm not sure how long ago, maybe a week ago. Um, I brought them out of the garage because we store them in the garage. And so dahlia tubers come in all shapes and sizes. This is another one here. So if you're new to dahlias, you know, they, they vary a lot in shape and size. Some are long and skinny, some are chubby and fat, but they're all going to grow into nice plants. And some will wake up sooner than others. So, you know, some will have little shoots like the Linda's baby I just showed you. And then some like this one here. So this one has got the tiniest eye just in there. So um, they're just all going to wake up at different times. This one's got little eyes just here. I'm going to empty this crate and then show you what I do with them afterwards. So all of this sawdust goes into a big sack. And then we use this as brown material in the summer months on our compost heaps. So, you know, it's important to mix brown and green material. And in the summer, uh, we all as gardeners have loads and loads of uh, green material and not so much brown. So we just chuck a couple of handfuls of the sawdust in each time we put green stuff on our compost uh, so that we're having a really good um, combination of green and brown on our compost heap. So this is just a sack that sits next to our compost heap. See, this one's absolutely tiny. It's the size of my hand. This is a dahlia called Maya, and you'd think it's not going to grow anything, but actually it's got at least two eyes. It's got an eye there. There's an eye there, and there's another eye there. This plastic I take off um, once I put it in the pot, I stick a label in it and take the plastic off. And then sometimes we get absolute whoppers like this one. This is Florinor and my goodness it's got a lot of eyes. There are eyes there and some in here. So this is definitely a dahlia tuber that I could divide. And I really find that this way of storing dahlias works for me. You know, everything comes out, it's really firm, completely solid. So storing them upside down in sawdust in our garage just works perfectly. This is Blue Bayou. And it's just really solid, lots of nice eyes poking 
up there. So I've unpacked the crates and now I'm going to just show you. It's so simple to pot up a dahlia. Um, if you're like me and you've got absolutely loads of dahlias, then we definitely need to label them because otherwise we won't be able to plan our color combinations in the borders. And that's what I really love to do. So this is Florinor. First thing I'm gonna do is write my label. And now that I've written my label, I can take my tag off. Oh, I've just lost an eye. Don't panic if that happens to you. It just came off there. It will grow back. So this is going to fit really nicely and really easily into one of my two litre pots. We don't want loads and loads of room around our dahlia when we're just potting up at this stage because uh, there's a chance that we could overwater them and these are just very temporary. They're only going to be in here for a matter of weeks whilst they're waking up, especially if they've got little eyes like this. So this dahlia, you know, we could cut off, trim the roots, but it really isn't necessary. It's just you could just pot it up just like this. I'm just using my normal peat-free compost that I use for everything. And I've just put about an inch in the bottom. As I said, this is a very temporary thing. We're not trying to give it lots of nutrition. It's just sort of a good environment for the dahlia to wake up in. And I'm literally just going to fill the area around it with compost like this. So I'm not putting loads and loads of compost on that. I'm putting gloves on because my hands get super dry when I'm doing dahlias all day long. So it's barely covered, which is absolutely fine. In fact, it would be fine if I covered it slightly less than that, but I like to cover it properly and then I label it. And then this now goes indoors. So I take it indoors and I'll show you that. But first, I'm going to show you how I divide a dahlia if that's something that you might want to do. So this dahlia is called American Dawn. I've written my labels, so now I can take off this plastic tag. So this one, we can clearly see there are two eyes here. The reason they're curved like this is because I've had them in storage and it's been upside down, so they're looking for the light. And then, these are three old stems from last year. So these eyes are coming out of this particular round bit here. And if I turn this over, this particular stalk, so these are the eyes here. This one here has got little eyes just starting. Can you see those darker bumpy circles? They're just starting. So this one has got some eyes and some nice strong tubers. And this one probably does too, but I'm going to focus on just dividing it into two for now. So I'm going to split it down here and just take off this chunk that's got the eyes on this side. Now, it really doesn't matter what you do and what you use. Um, I have various different things. I have a Swiss knife or Japanese knife. I have a Hori Hori knife and I have snips and secateurs. And I use a combination of all of these things to hack away at my dahlias. The only important thing to know is that you need to save the eyes and at least one tuber on each bit. So in doing this, we are going to lose some of these tubers. Like some of them are definitely, they're going to, I mean, this one's falling off anyway. So we can just start by taking that off. We don't want one that's got a broken neck. And the neck is simply just the bit that it's where it joins this round bit where all the eyes come out of. So I need to be really careful to make sure I protect these ones that are growing here. And this is this is the round bit here that's got the smaller eyes on that I want to take off and save. So I'm just going to go in with my knife and sort of wiggle it about a bit. Well, I mean, that's interesting. So it doesn't matter that that's happened. I, I haven't managed to separate this bit from this bit yet. And what I've got here is another part of American Dawn. And I'm just looking to see, I mean, that could be an eye there, but actually 
this is looking a bit rotten, which is probably why it came off anyway. I'm going to bin that bit. I don't need that bit. So again, I'm going to try to go down here and just try to separate these two. There we go. Not so difficult. So I've now got this lump with these two eyes. There are probably more eyes here that will wake up in a minute. And it's got some nice strong tubers on it. And then this bit that had the eyes here has got loads of nice strong tubers on it. And now I can just plant both of these up. So again, we want to just make sure they fit in nice and neatly. I'm gonna put a little bit of compost on the bottom. I'm slanting it slightly, only just so they fit in a bit better because they're quite long. Just make sure we get compost around all sides. So I haven't covered it completely, but it really doesn't matter. It will get covered properly when it goes into the bed. I could cover it more. It really isn't important. And to be honest, I'm just trying to conserve compost a bit. And I'm putting this one in with these facing upwards. And it really doesn't matter if your tubers are lying down lengthways or if they're standing upright. That is not what's important. And it doesn't matter if I cover these, I could cover them completely. I'm just not going to because as I said, I don't want to put loads of compost in the pots. So that's how I divide the dahlias or decide whether I'm going to divide the dahlias. You don't need to divide all your dahlias. You don't need to divide any dahlias. It does help if they're like really big clumps, like three times the size of my head, it's going to rejuvenate your dahlia um, if you divide it. And to be honest, they just become really heavy and cumbersome. So you can either divide it and give some away to friends or family or whoever, or sell them um, or you can just bin the bits you don't need and just end up with a manageable clump because all the dahlias are going to create new tubers over the growing season uh, whilst they're flowering and then you'll just like if we don't divide the dahlias they just become too huge and heavy and I have got some monsters some dahlias don't create loads of new tubers you might dig up a dahlia that's flowered really well during the season and then you find that actually the tubers are really small and you're like how did that tiny tuber create so many flowers but every daily is different and the shapes and sizes are different and if you get sent by a supplier just one lump one potato tuber thing and it's got an eye on it that is still going to grow an amazing plant so it's absolutely fine it doesn't matter how many bits you have it doesn't matter if every single potato -y bit is dangling off but one of them is still secure if one's secure you can cut off all the dangly bits hang on let me show you one let me show you what i'm going to do with one that's got loads of dangly bits where it just feels like this isn't going to grow anything. So this is a gorgeous dahlia called Fancy Pants. So now I've written the label I can take the tag off and this is they're worryingly loose so you could be sent one that looks even ropier than this and I'm going to show you what to do with something that's all dangly like this and that it's absolutely fine. This one is hanging on by a thread so I'm going to snip it off because we don't want that. What could happen is it could just rot in the ground. This is quite firmly attached. This one is fairly firmly attached. This one, I mean that one's broken there at the neck. So I'm going to chop that off. We don't want that one. So can we see that I mean, there's still some, there are still some threads holding this one together here. So I'm going to leave that one attached. I'm going to leave that one attached. This one is very wonky. Now all we need, remember, is just one tuber. So it would be fine just to leave these two bits. This one, this one, that's coming off too. So you would think that we'd really want to keep this really big one here, but it's got a weak and broken neck and I don't want it to rot in the ground. And as long as I've still got some tubers attached, <laughs> so this little pink bit here, that's an eye, and this tiny little white bit here that's just poking out, that's also an eye. But because I've still got healthy, firm tubers attached to where my eyes are coming out, this is absolutely fine. This is still going to grow a really nice dahlia. And I'm just going to pot this up. So again, we don't want the pot to be too big. 
So I'm popping it into here. I promise you this is still going to grow a really nice dahlia. So I've got absolutely stacks of dahlias to do now. I'm just going to get on and pot up all my dahlias. Then I'll show you how I water them and where I store them and what I do with them when they start sprouting because I've got quite a lot that have started sprouting already. And I'll show you uh, how I'm taking care of those before I plant them in the garden. Now that I've potted up some dahlias, I'm going to water them. It's really important that they get a little bit of moisture, but also that they're not sitting in really damp compost um, whilst they're rooting in and growing shoots. So don't overwater them. So I dampen the compost, um, but I don't absolutely soak them. And I'll show you, I'll, I'll film it in real time. So I'll show you exactly how much water I give to the dahlias um, whilst I'm starting them off like this. Once they start shooting, then we need to check the compost on a daily basis to make sure that it's not too dry. Um, and I'll show you where I keep those dahlias in a second, but let's water these ones in first. So that's it, that's all I'm going to give them. Now I'm going to take them indoors. Now, if you've got a greenhouse, you could bring them on in a greenhouse. Um, they don't necessarily need light, but I do keep mine uh, near the windows. Not on a windowsill, but near the windows. So I give mine a little bit of light, but I have brought them on in complete darkness before in our storeroom. So it doesn't matter too much as long as we're checking them on a daily basis, because as soon as they start shooting, we've got to give them light. We don't want white shoots at all. We really want green shoots immediately. So. Um, um, let me show you where I bring mine on. So I'm here in the unfinished part of our property. Uh, we don't have floors and you know, nothing's finished here. This is an extension that isn't quite finished. So I'm really lucky because even though I don't have a greenhouse, I've got this spot that I can use to bring on my dahlias. So the heating's not on in here. So when it gets down to two degrees at night, it's probably pretty cold in here. It's probably about seven or eight degrees inside. Um, and then they do get sunshine from the windows. Um, so they will get light during the day. Um, and this is where I keep all my dahlias as I'm bringing them on. Let me show you. I'm a little bit shy to show everybody exactly how many dahlias I've got, but we've got all of these. You can see all the building stuff still over in the corner there. And then through to the room that I'm using for my seeds over there, there are even more dahlias that I'm bringing on. Now, most of the dahlias look like this. So they take a little while to get going. So there's absolutely nothing showing on any of these. But as soon as I spot them, and you can see I've piled them too high, 
you know, they're, they, they are stacked up, which is absolutely fine until we see shoots. So I check them on a really regular basis. And then as soon as there are shoots, they move over to this spot here next to the window. And I'm talking about something really little like this here. So as soon as I see a peak of anything, I bring it over. And then on a daily basis, I check. And once they're about this big, I guess, what is that? That's about an inch and a half. So when they're about an inch and a half, I then take them to my hardening off spot. So as soon as they're this, high, this tall, so on a daily basis, I'm taking plants through to where I'm gonna show you now. So let me take you to the hardening off spot. So I'm bringing these two today because these two are tall enough to now go. Gosh, the sun's come out. I might actually be able to take my scarf off now and maybe one of my layers. Um, so as soon as I see proper shoots, like about an inch and a half, something like that, I don't measure it. I bring the dahlias outside during the day, like straight away. It doesn't matter what the temperature is. I mean, if it was minus, I wouldn't bring them outside, but we're past that here where I live in the UK, which is equivalent to a zone 8A. So um, I'm not going to have freezing cold temperatures like that, but I might have a frost. So during the day, come rain or shine or hail, they are outside, but I bring them in when it gets dark at night. So they stay outside until it gets dark, which is about seven o'clock, I think. So they are out all day, come rain or shine, hardening off properly. And that way I never have to worry about them being hardened off because they're literally living outside during the day. Now I bring them in out inside overnight for two reasons. The primary reason is because I'm trying to avoid the little babies being eaten by slugs and snails. And the other reason is because just in case there's a frost and we are getting down to sort of minus, um, not minus two, we're getting down to about two degrees, three degrees centigrade here over the next week or so. So um, I don't want to risk them, you know, those little leaves being bothered by frost. Um, I want to protect them. So they come inside. I'm really lucky because I've got somewhere where I can bring them inside and I just bring them into my kitchen. There's room in there. Now I use racks, let me show you. So we have these racks and I load them onto here with all my seedlings. They've got wheels so I don't have to carry them all. I could just leave them on the racks during the day but only if they're on the top. I tend to leave them actually if they're on the top, but for the purposes of the video, I've taken them off. But um, if they're on the next rack down, I feel like they're not getting enough light. Um, and in fact, they're not getting enough weather. So I take them off the racks and I put them here. Well, you can see all my seedlings hardening off, but this is where the dahlias live. So the dahlias are growing beautifully. They, um, they get hit by everything. Uh, as I said, we've had hail, uh, we've had rain, we've had sunshine, and they are just living outside. Now, I do check them on a really regular basis for water. Obviously, if they've been rained on, they're not going to need any water. But to check whether they need water or not, literally just pick it up. Sometimes you can feel just by the weight of the pot. You know, you can lift it up and feel, actually, this one does feel really light. It feels like it needs some water. But the other thing to do is just do the finger test and stick your finger in there. And actually, it is a bit darker. It's still damp in there. So I wouldn't necessarily water that plant because I feel like the soil is still a little bit damp and we don't want to overwater the dahlias because then the tubers could start rotting. So we can see that all dahlias look different. Some have got much darker leaves, some have got pale green leaves, some we can see there are a few shoots, like three shoots on this one, and some of them have only got one shoot, and they may get more as time goes on. And I haven't pinched any of these yet. Now, I won't pinch my dahlias until they're significantly taller, so I would want them to be at least a foot tall, maybe a foot and a half. Obviously, it depends on the variety, but they need to have a significant number of leaves um, before we start pinching them. And that is because um, they need to photosynthesize. So as soon as we start taking foliage off them to pinch them, um, then they've got less ability to grow because we're taking away 
you know, their source of nutrition is sunlight on their leaves. And so if we pinch them, we're taking away some of that ability to grow. And I want them to grow. So I'm not going to pinch mine for a while. Um, and it is important to pinch them, I believe. Um, so I'll show you that in a future video. If you want to see that, then do subscribe to my channel because I'll definitely show you me pinching these dahlias. The other thing that some people will do is they will prevent the plant from having too many shoots. So if for instance you've got a fairly small pot like my two litre pots and so you've got a you know a, a decent sized tuber but maybe we've got nine shoots or ten shoots coming off that tuber then some people may pull off one or two of those shoots and you can root those and make more tubers um, just to bring the tuber down or the plant down to maybe seven shoots or five shoots because that way we're not stressing the tuber too much or stressing the plant too much because obviously the more shoots it has the more flowers you're going to get and we don't want to exhaust it so some people will take off uh, stems as they grow um, and if I have to do that to any of my tubers which is pretty unlikely because they're not big enough but if I have to do that then I'll show you that too in a future video. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is that all your dahlia tubers are going to um, shoot or grow at very different rates and in fact you could have five of the same variety say you've got five tubers of wizard of oz they are not all going to grow shoots on exactly the same day some of them could be a week or two weeks later so just because your tubers aren't shooting doesn't mean that they're duds um, so do give them time make sure your compost is moist but not wet you don't want to rot your tubers so always stick your finger in and check that it's right um, don't let them freeze whilst we're bringing them on early like this um, but they will eventually grow shoots sometimes some tubers just take forever and we have to be patient I mean I think if it's two months down the line then there's probably something wrong with your tuber but with in a matter of I'd say three weeks you should see signs of tiny little eyes or shoots and they will all grow on. Now these ones that are outside here I potted up about three weeks ago so I've been gradually potting up my tubers over the last three weeks and these were the first ones that I potted up and as you can see they're coming on each day I'm bringing more and more outside but this is how many have produced shoots over the last three weeks. Now it's totally possible after your last frost to just plant your tubers in the ground in the normal way that we'd put a plant in the ground and you know just bury it in the same way that we do with the pots and put it in the ground and it will grow in the ground. There won't be any problems, it's absolutely fine to wait and to do that and if you're buying tubers in May or whenever it is after your last frost you can still grow dahlias this year. It's definitely possible to do that. Um, that's not a problem so just because some people like myself bring them on early doesn't mean that we all have to do that and if you haven't got the facility to do that then don't worry just plant them in the garden after your last frost and they will grow wonderfully. You will have to put some form of protection like a copper ring or something um, around your plants so that we deter the slugs and snails because they really really love young shoots of dahlias and an entire plant can get eaten alive or go out at night and collect them up and put them in a woodland somewhere <laughs> um, or you know anything that suit, takes your fancy however you normally deal with slugs and snails just protect your dahlias young shoots so as soon as the really cold night temperatures have gone and maybe it doesn't get below seven or eight degrees at night and as long as my plants are past this stage where they're probably, what is that, 10 centimetres tall, three or four inches, they're three or four inches at the moment, I wouldn't leave these outside but if they were bigger than that, which they will be in a week or two, I will leave these outside at night and get them accustomed to the temperatures outside and then pretty soon in May I'll be planting the dahlias out in the garden. Well, I think I've pretty much covered all the different processes that I go through in order to bring my dahlias on early and to look after them during these early stages. If you've got any questions that I haven't answered, then leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you. And if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and interesting, then please do give it a like because it really does help me. And I appreciate everybody who likes my videos and has subscribed to my channel. And I really hope that I can bring you more interesting and fun 
and videos in the days and months to come. So thank you very much for subscribing. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you all next time.